Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. So in this lecture series, we are going to discuss the difference between CSS and CSS3. So in this lecture series, this is our lecture number 3 that is very very important for your examination point of view. So before moving to the introduction part or before moving to the practical section, you should know the difference between these two. This is very important topic. So many students have queries that uh, which of the following, which of the following is the latest version, which of the following type of CSS is more supportive for a responsive design. So I am going to answer all your questions in this video. So let's move. So as you can see here, on the basis of some features, we are going to differentiate, right? So first feature is compatibility. So if we talk about the compatibility of a basic CSS, the primary purpose of CSS was to focus on formatting feature and they have capabilities for positioning text and object, uh, objects. So CSS is backward compatible with CSS3, right? So basic function of CSS is uh, to make your HTML page more attractive, to make your HTML page more interactive for everybody. So we can uh, make use of CSS for this particular feature, right? So let's talk about CSS3. So when CSS3 code is written in CSS, it is invalid. So remember this point, whenever you are going to use CSS, you cannot use CSS3 code in between it. Okay, so think about it and make sure what type of CSS you are going to use, what version of CSS actually you want and you are going to use in your web page designing. So CSS3 makes the web pages more attractive and it takes less time to create a page. As we all know, this is a, actually a basic formula, this is actually a basic scenario that every latest version is better than the previous one. Okay, so according to this point, CSS3 is more compatible, CSS3 is more attractive or more easier to use as compared to CSS. So that's why in case of compatibility, we can say it as CSS3 is more compatible and more easier to use. Now let's talk about their design. So CSS does not support responsive design, whereas CSS3 is the latest version and it supports the responsive designing. So as you can see in uh, so many latest uh, websites, so many latest uh, applications, we always use more responsive design. We always see more responsive designs. So you can also create, you can also make your HTML uh, web page more responsive by using CSS3. So in this complete video lecture series, we'll definitely start with basic CSS, that is the previous version. And after that, we will move to the CSS3, so that it becomes easier for you to understand everything. That's why I will start with CSS basic structure, then move to the its move to its latest versions. Right? Now, third point is let's talk about its modules. So CSS is not divided into modules, but in case of CSS3, we can split our code into different modules. In case of CSS, simple CSS, we, uh, we can have uh, three types of uh, cascading style sheets, right? That is inline, second is external, and third is internal. Okay, we have three types, but internally we are not allowed to divide our css code into different modules that is its disadvantage major disadvantage in today's world we always need a programming language we always need a styling uh, language in which we can divide we can split our module in so many different sections so that we can use them separately okay so modularization is today's need Remember this point. Next feature is animation. So CSS cannot produce 3D animation and transformation. And CSS3, we can use 3D transformations. Okay, so all kind of transformations and animations are performed by using CSS3. That is plus point. Okay. So next feature is 
rounded corners and gradients so for example this is my basic table or this is any image i have used in html if i want the rounded corners of this particular image like this let's say okay so when css3 was launched the developers designed some images that looked like the rounded corners with the structures and backgrounds and developers are designing a border and uploading the design to the server and in case of css3 the developer writes the code like round border okay so css3 provides us a new feature that is round border border radius 20 pixels so what is the radius i want I, if i want slightly round corners then i can use 5 pixels if i want more slightly more uh, deep corners then i can use 30 to 40 pixels so if you want to around the corners or gradient the corners of your particular image you can use the round border system here okay next is text effects and text animations so in css animations are written by using javascript or jquery but if someone don't uh, want to use javascript or jquery you can use css3 because it gives us the facility to add effects or uh, to add animation to the given text okay so css3 the developers add text shadows to make it easy and effective they add words for the visual effect and the break line and a comfortable fit inside the co column and it changes the size and color of the text okay so in case of simple css it had no special effects such as shadowing text or text animation next is its capabilities so css is slower as compared to css3 as we have told you uh, in a previous slide that every time the latest version is more attractive more uh, interactive as compared to the previous version okay so capabilities or capacities of css is slower than the css3 next property is color so css provide unique color schemas and standard colors but if we talk about css3 it supports hsl rgba hsla and a gradient color this is the current feature these are the current features that everyone want to, uh, want to use in their web page so you can use hsl rgba and hsla gradient colors by using css3 next is blocks so multi uh, multi column text blocks are defined in css3 but not in css okay css only supports single text block for example as you can see here in the screen i have used three columns so this is what this is multi column text block but css only provide a single column text block okay so this is the difference that is most important next point is lists so css allows a user to they can set different list for ordered list if you remember in html we have used basically two types of list first is what first is ordered list and another is unordered list ordered list contains like one two three four or we can use a b c d type of statements or we can use small a b c d or we can use here like this three and four even we can use it like this and this okay so all these are the ordered list where our list will follow a particular order and in case of unordered list we can use bullets we can use tick marks we can use these buttons also there are so many options right so css allow user to set different list of for ordered list so by using css we can make use of different ordered list types and css 
set an image for a list item marker and CSS add background colors to the list and list items. For example, if I want to make a list like a list of my shopping, okay, my books list, my to-do list and I want to add some background color. Suppose its background color is blue. I want its black background color green and I want its background color to black. So I can use different background colors by using CSS. So some list item markers are list style type and these can be set circle, square, etc. Now let's talk about CSS3. It says that the list item has a counter and affected by counter increment and counter reset property. And in CSS, if we use list in CSS3, the display property have must have a list defined in it. So Overall, we can say that CSS3 cannot support a numbering system. That means CSS is not allowed to use ordered list. This particular statement is very, very important for its examination point of view. Okay, so I hope you understood everything. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching this video.